Um, so I'm an algebraic geometer. So I will start my talk basically in the same way as Alex Perry did, by writing down a um, by writing down a quadratic equation. In my case, it's going to be a quadratic equation in three variables. So if you look at its zero locus, it defines you a hypersurface in P3. So here I mean complex projective three space. I'm going to work with complex numbers all doing all of this talk. And because it's the zero locus of one equation, this is a complex two-dimensional object or a real four-manifold. Let me call it x for now. And so this is a, um, let's see, uh, a quadratic surface. And since it's four-dimensional, I can't really draw it. But you can draw its real locus. And it might look something like, like I mean, this is usually the way how people draw it. So kind of like a cylinder, but the surface of a cylinder. But um, it's a bit narrower in the middle. And I will be interested in studying um, complex, complex curves or algebraic curves. So algebraic curves on this quadratic surface, uh, I mean, or more generally, on more general algebraic varieties. And um, to give an example, here you can actually write down many, many possible lines. And for example, you can look at the following line with the following um, parametrization, um, 2s, 3, 3s, to the 3t, where here um, s, comma, t is our parameters from um, the complex protective line. Let me, let me draw it a bit bigger. Um, this is a curve because it has because it's parametrized by a um, protective line, and it has four coordinates. So it will define you something in P three. And now you can check that um, if you multiply x zero, huh. if you multiply x zero times x three, you get six st. And if you multiply x two by x x1 by x2, you also get 6st. So this line actually lies on this, um, on this hypersurface. And lines are only one example of, of algebraic curves. And I'm also, more I'm also interested in studying other curves, say, on this quadratic surface or on other um, algebraic varieties. And maybe to make that more precise, let me give you a definition. So we say that C inside some x in protective space is a, so I'm going to define you what it means to be a genus G, degree D curve. If, so genus G means that C, C is always going to be a compact Riemann surface or an algebraic, which is the same thing as an algebraic curve, smooth algebraic curve, and of genus G. So which means just if you look at the corresponding surface, um, it's a number of holes. So this would be a genus 2 Riemann surface. And the degree means um, if you take this curve inside this protective space and you intersect it with a hyperplane, you, you, you expect to get a finite number of points. And these, this is how many points you get. And so um, in this example up here, um, so since it's, it, it's a P1, it's, which, uh, so it looks like a so P1, so complex projective line looks like a sphere. So this is genus, genus 0. And because it's a line, I mean, a line intersects a hyperplane and just one point, so it's a degree one. Kind of the simplest case you could consider. OK, so these are, so here I'm telling you what are curves on algebraic varieties. And now I'm going to concentrate on what is, so I told you about quartic surfaces. But the main, the main target in this talk is going to be 
a different, more interesting x. Any questions so far? OK, so in the rest of the talk, x will be will be what is called a Calabi-Yau um, n-fold. Uh, shortly, that means that um, it is uh, um, simply connected complex n-manifold, um, such that it has a vanishing holomorphic n-form. But I mean, more concretely, um, like it has a very special geometry. And you have seen examples of Calabi-Yau manifolds before, uh, namely, um, so if dimension of x is 1, these are just elliptic curves. OK, I guess everyone knows these. And in dimension 2, they are called K3 surfaces. And they feature, featured prominently in Alex's talk yesterday. And I will mostly consider the three-dimensional generalization of, of these two. So then there are many of them. And I mean, they're called Calabi-Yau three-folds. And maybe, maybe one example. Let me give one example. And one simple example would be, and that appears in the title, if you take a um, degree 5 equation inside, in five, uh, inside MP4, CP4. That is an example, and it's called a quintic threefold. This is an example of a Calabi-O threefold. And, and Calabi-O threefold folds, I mean, they're, they're important for many reasons. One is that um, they have a very, there are many, many different kinds of curves, as we're going to see on Calabi-O threefolds. And I mean, they appeared in Yao's conjecture to in Yao's solution to Calabi's conjecture, but also they appear in, in string theory, where um, physicists conjecture that our world should have um, that they need six extra dimensions in order to describe our world, and in order to get a consistent theory, they need that these six extra dimensions should look like a calabi yau threefold, which is a six real six manifold. OK, great. And now, OK, now bringing things together, we, would, we, we are interested in studying such genus G degree D curves on, on a quintic, or on, on, or on another Calabi of threefold. And that is, that is very difficult. There are only f finitely many examples where people can compute the number of such curves. And because of that, we will consider a slightly we consider a simpler problem. So for that, um, instead of counting the actual curves, we're going to look at the genus G, degree D, and um, of witten invariant. Of, say, of x5. These of witten invariants, the definition is pretty technical, so I can't give it here. But you should think of them being related to the count of genus G degree D curves, like this, on, 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 on the quintic. And while they are not the actual counts, they have many nice properties. And like, there's a lot of structure to them. And I'm going to give you an example soon. Namely, they are, they actually come from physics, and they appear in the following important um, conjecture called mirror symmetry. Uh, maybe maybe as, as, as an evidence that these are easy to, to compute, we actually know all of these in, in say, genus 0 and genus 1. Okay. So there's a principle. I mean, it's not, a, it's not very, it doesn't have a complete mathematical formulation. But um, string theory um, predicts that for every Calabi-Yau threefold x, and maybe let's specialize to the quintic, 
the should exist was called a mirror, a mirror color via threefold, such that, such that some aspects of the geometry of the quintic should be related to different aspects of the geometry of the mirror. And in our case, in our case, mirror symmetry will relate the Kromov-Witten invariance of the quintic to something people can compute on the mirror side. And so on, for the quintic, we're going to consider all these Kromov-Witten invariants. And it's going to be convenient to put them into a generating series. We collect all Kromov-Witt invariants that have the same genus, but for varying degree. So we put in infinitely many of them into one series. Yes. And on the other side, um, so, what's the so the degree d. Sorry. So I guess this is d times, and the sum is over all degrees, all possible degrees. We fix, yeah, so there's some exceptions. I mean, you can define Kromov Witten invariance even for constant maps, but with an exception in genus 0 and genus 1. So I, I think to be precise, I will want the genus to be at least 2. You can modify the statement for genus 0 and genus 1. Okay. On the other side, on the mirror, it's supposed to be related to. Um, things like variation of Hodge structure, pick up folks' differential equations. And you can cook up the following object. You can cook up an object out of the mirror, which is a ring um, of period integrals. So it's, it's, some, it's some polynomial ring. There are finitely many generators. Each of the generators depends on a variable q, because the mirror quintic at the mirror Calabi-L threefold is actually not just one Calabi-L threefold, but there's a whole family of them. And you get integrals that depend on a parameter q. Maybe there's several of them. You can make it explicit. And like, yeah, I'm, I'm not writing anything down explicitly, but this is a concrete object. You can, like, these are formal series in q. You can write all of them down. And, and then the conjecture says that this collection of Kromov Witten invariants isn't an arbitrary power series in Q, but it can be written in terms of these integrals, in terms of these concrete functions. And so, yeah, what, what is known about this conjecture? So first it was, I mean, the conjecture it comes from physics. And so physicists, Candela, Stiller, Osser, Green, and Parks, and um, Bershatsky, Sikotti, Oguri, and Bafa, um, they came up with this conjectures in the early 90s. And it took a long time in mathematics to resolve them. And the first case, where the genus is 1 and the genus is 0, was resolved by uh, Giventhal and Lian Yu Yao in the um, mid-90s. And it took 10 about 10 more years, so uh, until the mid-2000s, for Alexei Singer and a team of, many other of several other mathematicians to resolve the conjecture for genus 1. And then, like only in the recent years, it was resolved in general. And I've been part of one of the two teams of mathematicians that um, established this conjecture. And like it involved um, work of many people. And so one of the two groups is by Chang, Guo, Li, Li, and Liu. And the other is I'm part of is by Chang, the same Guo. It's a bit strange. Um, you buy a lot of tickets. <laughs> <laughs> and Yongbin Ron. And so it, it's true. And I should also say, so here in these two cases, um, like you can actually write down explicit formulas. Like in these two cases, it's explicit. 
you can write down explicit formulas for FG, whereas in, um, for higher genus, oh, for genus 2, we also have a formula. But in general, we only know that it can be expressed in terms of these certain series. And so um, both. You should think of that ring like a ring of modular forms. Okay. So it's, it's special that, like, not every function. Like, you should think of it. Yeah, I can write down, f I can show you some formulas if you like. <coughs> but it takes some time to write them down. And, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's strange. Like the Q on one side is a formal parameter, and on the other side you should think of it as a coordinate of a parameter space of, of, of these three faults. And so, uh, yeah, to finish off um, what I'm doing now, so we, we developed a new technique in order to establish this conjecture. And we call it our new technique log G loss M. It's kind of pretty technical. And I mean, what I'm involved in is um, we, we, we need to um, finish up uh, writing up the foundations of this theory. And, and second, um, it should apply to many other Calabiaus. And so we want to see if, if we can also um, prove such a mirror conjecture for other Calabiaus three faults. And we stop here. Thank you.